Welcome back everybody to Madden 17 News. There is even more information to talk about this week and there are a couple articles that go into good depth. So there will be multiple videos here on the channel today. And if you are enjoying these Madden 17 News videos, please leave a like, I appreciate it. And subscribe for future Madden 17 News videos. But the first video here today is all about zone coverage. Which was one of the first things they talked about being a, an emphasis in Madden 17. Last week I was pretty excited talking about the gap play, alignments, and run fits for defense. And this week we're talking about zone defense which has a lot of depth here and more than I thought there would be. A lot has gone into the improvements on defense this year and I can't wait to see gameplay of it. But I'm following along with an article from EASports.com as usual it is linked down below in the description if you want to follow along with me. But this first screenshot here you can see updated play art for the zones which looks good. You can also see in those hook zones by the inside linebackers it says hook curl and on the outside you can see the linebackers have the curl flat and this goes into all the detail there. There are many new underneath zone concepts that are used for a variety of different situations. Hot routes are going to be different and there really is just a lot of depth to zone coverage this year and in this video there's going to be a lot to talk about. So to begin the article they talk about this new technology called behavior coordinator and basically the underneath zone coverage logic has been rewritten. In the past you only had three different zone coverages which were flat, curl flat, and hook. So your light blue, your purple, and your yellow. But now, like, it's not like they're introducing just new areas for players to defend. It's logic based on how the play unfolds. And there are different ways players can react to different route concepts. And that's where this really gets interesting. In the new zone coverage logic section, they say that they consulted with NFL coaches and players to get a thorough understanding of the various coverage concepts, rules for each player's assignment, and techniques players used in order to carry out their assignments. So there are now 10 new zone coverage assignments, and this article goes into all 10 of them. And each one has different rules and logic for that player. It also says that each player in a given coverage concept has knowledge of a global scheme and how everyone's assignment fits into the scheme. Each player having a global knowledge of the scheme gives them the ability to make progression reads, aka pattern reading or pattern matching. So basically we know the players are going to be much smarter, there's going to be a lot of things happening on the fly as the play unfolds, and they've gone from 3 underneath zones to 10, and all have different rules. So it's time to go into those, and we start with the cloud flat. And just keep an eye on these screenshots, it has those underneath zone assignments within the actual zone. So we have cloud flat by those cover two corners on the outside. Then to the inside of those corners you have the vert hook and then the mid read. So all of these are different and basically when you pick like your cover two defense or a cover three, they're going to come with set assignments here. So if cloud flat is supposed to be the assignment played in a given scheme, it's going to be the default assignment, but hot routes can change things if you want to play someone a little bit differently or you have to adapt to something they're throwing at you. So let's go into each and every one of these concepts. Cloud flat. So this is a cover two style assignment and the cloud flat player is responsible for protecting the outside deep and short areas of cover two. His priority is to protect against deep outside routes first and rally to short outside routes second. So there is the dynamic nature of this at play. If there's a vertical there, he's going to carry that receiver up the field. Sure, he has safety help over the top, but in a cover two, those safeties have a lot of ground to cover. And those verticals, traditionally in Madden, once that receiver gets past the cover two corner, you can hit him after about 10-15 yards before the safety can get over the top and have a pretty easy gain. So now that's going to be completely different, but you have different route concepts that are going to be very good against certain defenses. And in this case, they point out curl flats, one of my favorites. Because that cover two corner has to follow the deeper route first, he's going to go to the curl while you have a tight end or a slot receiver underneath. And that flat's going to be wide open, and depending on the receiver on the curl, you might have a chance to get some good yards after the catch if he's blocking. 
So that is just one of the flat concepts in here. That is cloud flat. Now we have hard flat. This is also a cover two style zone. Again, we're focused on those two outside cornerbacks. And in this case, their primary responsibility is for protecting the outside short areas of cover two. So in situations like short yardage, this is gonna be where you're gonna probably use the hard flat. Next, you have the soft squat. And this is primarily used in a two deep, four under zone blitz. And the soft squat player, based on the route concept ran by the offense, has the ability to convert to man coverage. That's very cool. The soft squat player also has the ability to jump certain types of outbreaking routes by inside receivers. Thus, defensive plays where a soft squat player is present are sometimes referred to as trap coverages. This is one I definitely want to experiment with, but it's great having just different ways to play the flats, different ways to counter certain passing concepts. Next up, we go to the curl flat zone defense, and this is the purple assignment on here, so... Now, the curl flat is responsible for protecting the outside, intermediate, and short areas of cover three. His priority is to protect against the deeper outside routes first, and rally to short outside routes second. Next up, we have the quarter flat assignment, which is primarily used by the outside edge players in cover four type defenses. So on one half here, you do have two deep zones, so it's a cover four look on that side. The opposite is a cover two look. So you have a combination of concepts here of sorts, and the quarters flat player, his assignment is based on the route concept by the offense, and can match certain outbreaking routes by an inside receiver and carry vertical routes by an inside receiver up to a certain depth. I'm really looking forward to seeing how these zones can minimize the damage done by slot receivers and tight ends on their inside verticals. They're very, very good now. And I'm hoping that you have to open things up a bit more in Madden 17. Up next we have the seam flat, which is an assignment used by the outside edge players in cover three type defenses and three deep three under zone blitzes the seam flat player based on the route concept by the offense can match certain outbreaking routes by an inside receiver and can convert to man coverage against vertical routes by an inside receiver by the way players typically play on madden with a lot of deep routes this might be one of the zones one of the new ones you're going to want to get very familiar with up next, the hook curl. Now we go inside. We've gone from the light blue to the purples. Now we have your inside linebackers and your safeties sometimes with the yellow zones as we're used to. This is the hook curl first up, and this is primarily used by the two inside zone defenders and cover three type defenses. And these players are responsible for protecting the inside short and intermediate areas of the field. In certain coverages based on the route concept, a hook player can also be responsible for the short outside area of the field to his side, which is the flat. So keep in mind, this zone is mainly worried about the short and intermediate areas of the field. And then you go down to the three receiver hook. And this is typically used by the inside zone defender in cover four type defenses and three deep, three under zone blitzes. The three receiver hook player is responsible for protecting the inside short and intermediate areas of the field. His initial drop is toward the number three receiver in the offensive formation. A little bit later in the article, they go into the numbering of receivers on each half, and that'll help kind of understand what this player is going to be doing. Up next is the vertical hook, which is primarily used by the two outside edge players in cover two type defenses, as well as two deep, four under zone blitzes. Depending on what coverage they're used in, as well as the route concept by the offense, the vertical hook zones can convert to man coverage against the vertical route of an inside receiver. So if you're worried about playing cover two and getting attacked by all these verticals, you might have a good counter here with these vertical hook zone assignments. And the final one is the middle read, which is another cover two style assignment by the middle linebacker who has to cover the deep middle area of the field. At the beginning of the play, he reads the passing strength of the offensive formation to determine if there are receivers threatening the deep middle of the field. To counter the middle read defender, look towards your levels passing concept, another one I like a lot. 
The deep receiver will drive the middle read defender downfield, leaving the underneath option open. So those are the 10 underneath zone assignments in Madden 17. Now in 16, I've been primarily a man defense player, and I play mostly offline. I've drafted a lot of man cover corners. But the zone coverage stuff in Madden 17 is definitely going to make me want to play a lot more zone. And I do like zone coverage just in general because you can mix up so many different looks. Now you can mix up assignments, you have pattern matching. I think zone coverage is going to be the way I go this year. I know a lot of people play zone coverage this year, but I'm, I've been all about the man coverage this year. I like the tight man coverage, although it's not really going to trick anybody, typically. If this all comes together the way we want it to, then Madden is going to become a much more intelligent game, especially online, and I'm excited to see what it does for the more competitive crowd. Up next, to talk about user mechanics, and obviously with all these new assignments and ways to play your flat coverage or your hooks. You have to have an efficient way of changing things, and hot routes had to be tweaked. So now when you pick a flat zone hot route, it's going to be defaulted as a hard flat. It says in here that in Tampa 2, for example, which by default has both cornerbacks and cloud flat assignments, a user may decide to have one cornerback play as cloud flat and put the other cornerback on the other side in a hard flat. So you can make these different adjustments and you can just play with these schemes and find out what you like the most. And obviously, being able to adapt and have more options for adapting is awesome. Now, we've also had coverage adjustments in our hot routes, and I think they're going to be a lot more used in Madden 17. And down here it says that the coverage adjustments underneath will change all flat assignments, including curl, seam, and quarter flats, to hard flats. So if you're worried about underneath routes, Obviously, there are assignments that are geared towards stopping the different areas of the field as a primary concern. So now you actually have kind of some context for what's going to be changing when you use those underneath, over the top, inside adjustments. It also mentions that the over top adjustment will put hard flat and soft squat into a cloud flat assignment. Over top will also change seam and quarter flat assignments into curl flat assignments. So now we go on to receiver count, which is important just for not only pre-play, but also post-play as it goes into here. These screenshots do a good job of illustrating this, but basically draw an imaginary line down the middle of the offensive formation, and then you count from the outside in, and that's how you gauge like what number each receiver is for each half. So obviously the outside guy is number one. In this screenshot, you have a slot receiver. He's the number two. And the back to the right of Andy Dalton there is the number three guy. In this screenshot, there was motion and the back to the left of Dalton is now on the right side of the formation, so it changes the ordering of the numbers on this side and you have four eligible receivers on that right side of the formation. In this last screenshot of this, you see that there is a back directly behind Andy Dalton and so he's counted on both sides. Now there are some assignments in here that aren't really concerned with how many receivers are on one side or their half of the field, but there are certain assignments where their initial step is to like, that. remember that three receiver hook? You're going to be taking your first step to that third receiver, so there are just different assignments where the ordering does matter here. However, this is just pre-play. There are things that happen during the play that can change the ordering of receivers. It says in here, in the above example, the receivers are aligned in a two receiver bunch alignment. Pre-snap number one is aligned tight near the pre-snap number two. When defenses see these types of alignments from the offense, they're generally expecting to get some kind of pass route concept where one and two will switch once the ball is snapped. Once the play starts and the receivers switch release, meaning they crisscross each other's path, at this point, the original number one receiver is now the new number two, and the original number two is the new number one. Having to know both the pre- and post-snap receiver counts is a very important aspect of playing a progression read pass defense, and they're going to be doing another blog about zone coverage improvements, it looks like, covering progression reads for zone defenders in Tampa 2, cover three match, and three and two deep fire zones. There was a lot about zone coverage in this article, and it looks like there's going to be another one. And obviously when that is released, I'll be talking about it here, but zone coverage is definitely different. 
It's no longer just cover this area. Assignments are dynamic and they react to the passing concepts. I cannot wait to see gameplay. And that's when we can truly judge this stuff. This is only just information, but it's definitely what we want to hear this time of year. And these focuses are exactly what, you know, I wanted to see from the game. I want to see it get more realistic. I would consider myself to be a more hardcore player, and obviously, I, I love watching football, I love realistic football, and I've always tried to bring a sim experience to my franchises, and I know we're all looking forward to see how good this zone defense can play out. But that is it for this video, guys. Thank you all for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more Madden 17 news videos. Leave your feedback down below in the comment section. Now we'll have another video out today. They have another blog about special teams and some stuff about catching in there. And so even more to talk about. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time. Have a great day.